Hey guys, out here walking uh, these big guys, big dogs. Um, so uh, today I thought I would talk a little bit about uh, detraining. I know uh, I do a lot of exercise myself, um, a lot of running, uh, swimming, cycling, a lot of cardio, um, and I also do a lot of like weightlifting, um, resistance training, etc. But um, I know one thing that I was always worried about, and I know a lot of people are worried about, is um, detraining. Essentially, uh, what's going to happen to your fitness if you stop training. So uh, I was going to talk a little bit about um, cardiorespiratory fitness and your uh, strength. Um, but there's a lot of stuff out there, so um, I'm not going to go into great detail. I'll just kind of give you the facts real quick. But um, another thing I wanted to talk about is a cool study that was conducted recently in the lab I worked in. Um, I was not actually part of this study, but it's a really cool study and I know a good bit about it and I think uh, it deserves a little bit more exposure. So uh, we'll go over that, but um, yeah, let's uh, get to talking. So first of all, what should you not be worried about? Um, a lot of people are worried that if they do not exercise for one day, that all the uh, magnificent gains that they've made are gonna somehow disappear. Uh, that's not true. Your body definitely needs rest, and your body can maintain itself pretty well on one, two, three, four days without exercise. Um, pretty much uh, it takes about a week for uh, cardiorespiratory fitness to start to decline. And even then, uh, your VO2 max maybe go down 5-10% by the end of a week or two. But uh, it's, it's not huge, um, it's kind of, it drops off, uh, kind of like a dose response. So the longer you go without it, the worse it is. So if you're not training for maybe two weeks or three weeks, you'll probably see a big drop off in your VO2 max. Um, big thing that causes that is a decrease in your stroke volume, which pretty much means that your heart can't pump as much blood so your cardiac output goes down, your heart rate uh, gets higher because it needs to pump that blood more frequently because it's not able to pump as much because your heart's not as strong. So um, pretty much uh, a few days without training, no issue. But uh, once you start getting past that, you start coming into uh, detraining. And uh, that pretty much just means your body doesn't need it, so it's a use it or lose it. So uh, yeah. Uh, cardiorespiratory fitness is probably the first thing to go. It goes a little bit faster than your muscular. So what about the muscles? Um, about two weeks, your uh, muscle cells start to lose mitochondria. Now this can play an effect in aerobic exercise as well because you need mitochondria in your cells to uh, use up the oxygen, etc. But um, about 25 days, um, a lot of your muscle starts to turn into fat. So I would say it's a little bit slower than uh, cardiorespiratory fitness, but it does uh, go down. Um, it's still more of like a dose response, so it, immediately it's not gonna really be a big effect. Um, it's usually more to do with your nervous system, not being used to the uh, lifting mechanics and not necessarily your muscle size but uh, after like three weeks four weeks uh, you'll usually start to see a lot of that muscle turn into fat but again um, all these numbers and statistics especially the ones you see are very um, person specific so those are general numbers based on a study that was conducted on a lot of different people so each of those individuals had uh, different responses made it to the beach Run free doggos. Um, all right, so let's, uh, well, first, take a look at the uh, water. A little bit of ice going on here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, it's starting to defrost, though, because there's been a few days where it hasn't been uh, too cold. Um, anyways, so last thing I wanted to talk about was a study um, conducted in the lab that I work in. Um, so naturally, I think it's kind of cool. Um, this was essentially on detraining in master's athletes. 
Um, this the average age of these master athletes was, I think, about 61. Um, they had to have had like 15 plus years of training or uh, endurance training. So the past 15 years, they have to have been pretty actively uh, participating in aerobic exercise, etc. And um, pretty much what they did, they had them come in. They took an MRI of them, which essentially tracks uh, the blood flow going to different parts of your brain. And um, they took it at baseline, so they had all the participants come in. And then at the end of 10 days of no exercise at all, they weren't allowed to exercise, so essentially they are going through detraining. Um, they came back in, and they took the MRI again. So um, at the end of the MRI, they looked at some regions of interest in the gray matter of the brain, and I think they found uh, approximately eight specific regions, um, medial temporal lobe, et cetera, precentral gyrus, um, a whole bunch of different areas in the gray matter that uh, had lost cerebral blood flow. So essentially this meant that at rest, um, the blood flow that was going to those parts of the brain had decreased within uh, only 10 days of stopping exercise for people. But the big kicker, um, at least in my opinion, and I think the study feels the same way, was the um, cerebral blood flow to the hippocampus. Um, if you guys don't know, hippocampus is really important for memory, um, a lot of other really important things, but uh, it's a big problem in aging, a big problem with things like Alzheimer's. Um, so pretty much uh, this blood flow or lack of blood flow to that part of the brain, the hippocampus, which has actually been shown to shrink in Alzheimer's, um, was found to be pretty significant with only 10 days of stopping exercise. So in 10 days when they stopped exercising, pretty much uh, uh, there was a significant loss in the blood flow that was going to the brain. So uh, that's kind of an indicator of the importance of exercise, not only for your muscles or your cardiorespiratory fitness, but also just in your cognitive fitness. Uh, really, a lot of uh, what I talk about is the importance of exercise for your brain function, not just uh, the rest of your body up here, not just down here. So uh, yeah, um, I'll link all the studies below and all the information below, some things that you can check out. Hey quiet dogs. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys for the next one.